So glottling has been named the most distinctive feature of Cockney English, at least as far as the consonants are concerned. So glottling turns sentences or produces phrases like that, a bottle of water, okay, instead of a bottle of water. You see, um, there is a certain glottal stop, yeah, uh, which replaces the original t. Okay, it's one realization of the phoneme t. Okay, um, let's look at that uh, more systematically. Um, first of all, where is the glottal stop produced? I mean, very much in the back of your throat, very down. Okay, your glottis, this is the gap between your vocal cords, is closed. Okay, then the air builds up and is explosively released. Okay, producing a sound like <laughs> okay, the so-called glottal stop. By the way, the symbol is that here, which looks a bit like a question mark, but it isn't. Yeah, this is the symbol for the glottal stop. Okay, um, a few sentences. Yeah, randomly chosen. Okay, uh, but here we go. I met her at a funeral. Okay. I met her at a funeral. You see that T uh, is replaced by a glottal stop here. Okay, or uh, this is what a bus driver said to me when uh, in London when I came with a 20 pound note. Okay, he said, move to the back of the bus and wait. As soon as I got them trying, she'd come up and pie. Okay, on that. Okay, very cockney. Okay, or here. Uh, a sentence, which is certainly true, uh, a sentence, yeah, okay. If you speak like that in the States, they automatically think you're from Australia. Which is true, since Australian English is an offshot of Cockney, don't forget that. You have the convicts in Australia and so on. Makes perfect sense. Okay, um, there you go. Let, let's have a look at that. Um, why? Okay, um, and I want to have a very pragmatic approach here. Um, since language is all about our accent, about simplification, okay? So you want to simplify articulatory effort. And the best thing you could do is, of course, if you want to simplify, I mean, leave whole consonants out. Don't pronounce them at all, okay? Particularly those plosives, which are very, very, it's a very, very big effort to pronounce those. So, but, I mean, a plosive is not only there to explode but it also is there i mean it cuts a vowel short usually the vowel before okay so if you left a plosive out i mean the vowel before that wouldn't be cut short not at all yeah? so bit would be something if you left the t out just like b or something like that um so you have to you have to cut the vowel short and how do you do that i mean by stopping your vocal cords from vibrating so closing the glottis okay so b becomes bit and then, okay, the air builds up and is released, producing this glottal stop. So the glottal stop is an offshot, if you like, yeah, of this closing of the gap. I mean, this is my personal view, but I, I think it makes perfect sense. Okay, it's not a replacement, not a conscious replacement. Huh? Okay, it's something like something, something else. Okay, um, glottaling of consonants and where in the word does it occur? Okay. Initially, it doesn't occur at all, except, yeah? except I mean, this uh, one, t, two, yeah? this uh, particle uh, together with a verb, uh, as in this example, yeah? I got to, I got, I got to go there, got to go there, okay, here, I've got to go there, even that, um, it's, uh, but it, it, it's more or less one word, yeah, I got to, it's so close together, I got, okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this initial glottaling. I would say it's glottaling between two vowel sounds. And we come to that now, yeah? Intervocalic glottaling. And intervocalic glottaling is the most distinctive feature of Cockney English because it's so prominent, yeah? Auditorily so prominent. You hear it, okay? In a word like better becoming better, okay? Uh, but be aware, okay? Not every intervocalic glottaling or not, no, let's say that, glottaling does not occur in any intervocalic environment. A precondition is that the vowel before the t phoneme is stressed, okay? So as is the case in better, but in a word like return, the stress is on the t, and therefore you can't glottal. Yeah? Return would make any sense at all, yeah? Better, yes. Return, no. Okay. 
Um, in double caliglottoling, in these words, I mean, they are always, they always come up. They are better, water, bottle, okay. Matter, butter, letter, and so on. Okay. However, uh, it also occurs a lot across word boundaries. Okay, I met her at the funeral. We had that here. Met her. I would call this intervocaliglottoling here. Met her. Okay. Uh, but I said, all right, let it be. Two glottal stops even, yeah? Let it be. Uh, lotter. Okay. At her. At her. Out of. Yeah? At her. Okay. So, uh, very prominent in Cockney English. This is so, uh, this or that. Okay. Um, and um, even uh, here, try her. Well, I try to go there. Um, I want to go there. Okay, so yes, uh, in double character, yeah? or after N. Okay, um, in double glottoling of any other plosive does not seem to be statistically relevant. Um, and and, and in double glottoling of fricatives, not at all, although a lot of books give you that. I mean, no fricatives. I mean, this is very erratic, I and mean, it may happen, but not on a very regular basis. Okay. Um, so, in double caliglottoling of per and de and ge and ker, no, it doesn't occur, okay? Um, and uh, one thing is important that in double caliglottoling, I wanted to mention that, um, is moving British English further away from American English, since uh, glottoling is spreading from London further north and, and, and west. I mean, you can see that. Uh, it has reached the coast down south. Um, uh, it uh, is very much responsible for the fact that British and American pronunciation, um, they are drift apart. They do. Because American, you would say better, which is still a lot closer to better, okay, than better. Okay. So better and better. Oh, it can't be further apart. But better and better. Well, that works. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So yes, really, phonologically, not, not as far as the lexicon is concerned, but phonologically, um, British English is moving further away from American English, which is interesting. Okay, um, uh, the most prominent or the most frequent occurrence of final glottoling is final T glottoling, Turk glottoling, because the words where it occurs, they are so frequent, yeah? And here, here we are. Yeah? Ba, bi, go, ba, si, ra, ka, no. Shit, fat, let, lot, what, set, cut, rot, plot, right, quite. Okay, here we go. Something like that. Uh, very frequent words, and therefore, yes, I mean, there, it, there it is. But this is not only Cockney. I mean, you find it in a lot of accents, okay? Um, but it's there. Um, and uh, final glottoning after run, after the nasal occurs as well. Don't, okay, won't, can't, okay, things like that. Yes, it does, not only after a while. A final K glottoling, yes, it does occur, particularly in this word, it is like, uh, which is more or less an expletive these days. You know? It's like, 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 like I said before, yeah, like, okay, like I said, okay, it's like that, it's like that, you see. Right, uh, yeah, right. I mean, it's such a frequent word, and it's glottal on a regular basis. It is. I mean, the other K glottaling, I mean, the other kind of K glottaling, is usually pre glottaling, and we have that too. So that you have the glottal stop and then have the plosive all the same. Uh, tyke, okay, tyke, okay, fike, spake, okay, and even a very strong aspiration, yeah, spake, okay, even particularly if you're a, when you're emphatic. Okay, this occurs quite a lot. Uh, final per glottaling, nah, not very often. I haven't had it, to be honest. I haven't had it. Uh, yes, uh, pre glottaling, yes. Stop. Okay. Uh, cop. Cup. Okay. And even with a strong aspiration, uh, even, particularly with cop. Okay. Can be very agitated if you're a cockney. No, I'm just joking. I mean, here we go. Yes, but pre-glottoling and then per and e, uh, strong aspiration. Yes, this is very, very prominent. Okay. Uh, final de-glottoling. Yes, uh, particularly in the auxiliaries. Okay. I will. I should. Okay. I could. 
some of that. And in the negations, but then leaving the final t out, okay, pre glottaling of the nasal. So, uh, so like, I wouldn't, uh, I shouldn't, I couldn't, couldn't go there, okay, shouldn't go there, I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, you hear that, okay, just a syllabic, we call this a syllabic nasal, then in the end, without the final t, completely left out. Okay, um, before we come to the sentences, I mean, um, um, glottaling of b and g, uh, people say they occur maybe in sloppy speech, but it's certainly not statistically relevant. Okay, b and, and g, no, okay, because it's too confusing. And there are not so many words with b and g, particularly if, if you have t, if you compare it to t. I mean, it's my theory that t glottaling is so prominent and they chose turglottaline because it's the most frequent consonant at the end of words. Here we go. Uh, think about that. Okay, uh, whole sentences uh, to uh, finish that off, okay, which, which I had, um, uh, which, which actually were pronounced, okay. Uh, the one here, let me try. The majority that live there want to get out of the area because of what it's turning into. Okay, whoa. Well, well, you see. How many glottalings you have there? Okay, the majority that live there want to get out of the area because of what it is turning into. Okay, right. Or um, here in Hackney alone, you get like about twenty muggings a day. Okay, in Hackney alone, you get like about twenty muggings a day. I'm not a Cockney. I try. I do my best. Okay, um, but you have the transcription here. Uh, do it yourselves. Uh, final one. Uh, you couldn't find anyone really anymore that could just totally speak Cockney. Yeah. Speak Cockney. Okay, here you have it. Yeah. Speak Cockney, which is very interesting because you have more or less two pre K glottalings, one across word boundary, speak Cockney. Yeah. And then the uh, plot to stop, and then uh, uh, the, the uh, Vila um, plosive. Um, anyway, yes, uh, uh, I think, yes, as far as Kurt is concerned, pre glottaling is the rule, more or less, and not just a single glottal stop. Okay, uh, this, that. Uh, that is the glottal stop for you, and have fun, and wait uh, for the next installment. Uh, okay, thank you.